Hello and welcome to another episode of Western Edge Living. I'm your host, Wild Bill. Why do they call me Wild Bill? Well, it compensates for my subdued personality. <laughs> okay, that might not be true, but it's a lot easier to remember than William James Michael Daniel Polinick Jr. Just call me Bill. Thanks for tuning in. Our program is brought to you each and every week by our great friends at CHI St. Alexia's Health Dickinson. And we are going to meet an employee of CHI, St. Alexia's Health Dickinson, in just a few minutes. And we're going to show you how their people are the most important part of what they offer the community of southwestern North Dakota. As uh, we get to know them much, much better, and uh, I think you'll agree that they are a wonderful asset to have here in the Dickinson area. And speaking of that, we're going to meet a gentleman today that's motivated by getting involved with his community. His name is Dean Kluver. And uh, I've never met Dean. In fact, you know, I usually take notes on uh, the guests that I'm going to interview. Here's what I've got on Dean. All I know about him is he's a painter. And I also know that he is very involved in his community. And he tries to motivate uh, others to also become involved. So we've got that and much more coming up on today's episode of Western Edge Living, presented by CHI St. Alexia's Health Dickinson. Call up the neighbors and tell them to turn on the TV because Western Edge Living starts right now. CHI St. Alexia's Health Dickinson presents Western Edge Living. Medora Boot and Western Wear in the heart of historic Medora. Open 10 to 5 every day, but closed Tuesdays. Boot is their middle name, and they have over 1,500 pairs of boots in stock for all ages and sizes. They also have the all-new Hire Boot with many new styles. Western clothes, belts, caps, hats, and more, including a great line of toys and longhorn wall decor. Medora Boot and Western Wear for the cowboy and cowgirl in you. Medora Boot and Western Wear. At Poncheros, we put a lot of work into building every burrito to last for about 10 minutes. Poncheros, come build your better. At Poncheros, every tortilla starts as a small ball of dough. Then it's fresh pressed to perfection. That's just how we dough it. Poncheros, come build your better. And welcome back to Western Edge Living, presented by CHI St. Alexia's Health Dickinson. We have made the trek from Legacy Square to our studios here of Western Edge Living. And as I told you from Legacy Square, that we're going to meet somebody today from CHI St. Alexia's Health Dickinson. And we get the privilege of spending some time with Allie Warner, the community health worker. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. What would you be doing if... Uh, if uh, you weren't here talking to me right now, what would you be up to? Just more office work. <laughs> <laughs> it's how nice long, to break away. <laughs> uh, how long have you been with uh, CHI, St. Alexis? Um, I've been in the current position for just about two years. Two years, okay. And we're going to talk about the steps that uh, led you to where you're at today. But uh, grew up in Gladstone on a farm just outside of Gladstone. Uh, family still uh, operates that farm? They do, yes. My uh, brother is currently running the operations now. Um, running hay operation, cattle operation mm -hmm. out of there. So. so you grew up gathering eggs and all that good stuff, huh? No, no eggs. No eggs? Nope, nope. No, we had pigs and cattle, and that was about it. So. Okay, but I bet you did have a work, you learned about a work ethic, right? I did. Growing up on a farm, yeah. Yes. That's yes. one of the assets of kids in southwestern North Dakota. They developed a, a, a work ethic at a young age and uh, gosh it's uh, good to have you here Allie. Thank um, you. You went to these uh, you went to grade school in uh, Gladstone right about the time that the school shut down? 
Um, I started kindergarten actually in Dickinson. Oh, you did. Um, okay. The the last year, um, the year that I started kindergarten, the school had already shut down. Mm -hmm. So yes, I am a Dickinson High graduate. Dickinson High. Okay, great. And then uh, went on to college after right after high school. I did. Yes, okay. I did two years at uh, Bismarck State College. Mm -hmm. um, got a degree as a surgical technologist. Okay. Um, spent twenty years in the operating room, and then um, one day I decided I needed more time at home with my children and went back to school to um, get my degree in psychology and came across this position as a um, community health worker and it fit with everything that um, I saw myself doing in my future so okay. here I am well let's uh, step back here a moment you said a surgical technician is that what uh, your position was yes what did that entail what was your what were your what did you do in the operating room so I was right there with the uh, the surgeon at the operating room table taking care of all of the serial instruments uh -huh. um, holding retractors for the surgeon uh, making sure that the surgeon had everything that they needed um, keeping everything sterile making sure that if there were any breaks in sterile technique that everybody was aware of them and we could correct them Correct me if I'm wrong. 20 years you said you did that? 20 years, yes. Wow. Just short of 20 years. And then yes. you transitioned into the office of the community health worker at CHI St. Alexius Health. And uh, all the above, the surgery, the surgical technician and your position now, um, I would have to believe comes from a love of people. And I can tell that you've got the personality and uh, the caring uh, um, abilities that uh, that uh, you instill in uh, the people that come to CHI. Am I off base? Is that the, is that pretty close? Yes, that's one hundred percent why I took the position. Great. Yes. Well, how important is that? I mean, you know, you you've seen people at their worst. I'm sure. You've seen people. I'm sure. You know, you have to give them the worst news that they've ever had. Uh, you've given the best news that they've ever had. Mm -hmm. Wow. That uh, talk about that. I mean, you know. You have to have the qualities, the personality qualities, to uh, to be able to do that. Talk about that. I think it just comes down to being a compassionate person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you said, we in healthcare we see a little bit of everything from their best days to their worst days. Mm -hmm. um, the people that I deal with are um, dealing with some pretty heavy stuff, um, and there's always that pride factor in there as well. Um, and so when people come into my office, I want them to know that I'm not judging them for anything. I don't know their story, but I want them to tell me their story. I want them to feel comfortable knowing that they can talk to me about their story um, and know that at the end of the day, I'm truly going to help them to get past those steps and those barriers. The liaison between nurses and doctors, you know, there's a, you know, a working relationship there, but then, then there's the, the relationship between the nurse and the patient, you know, which differs, I'm assuming now, correct me if I'm wrong, please, but it's different than from the doctor to the patient, but then you take it, do you take the ball and run with it from the nurses uh, with the patients? Is that what the community health worker does? Yes, I absolutely do. Um, I have the pleasure of spending an extra amount of time with patients, mm -hmm. um, building that relationship with them, um, getting that understanding of them. Uh, um, <clears throat> when they meet with me, I don't want them to feel rushed. They have, I have all the time in the world to meet with them. Um, a lot of times I meet with them um, where they're most comfortable. If they're not comfortable in my office, um, we can meet at a coffee shop in the community or at their home. Um, so whatever I can do to make them feel comfortable and build that relationship with them, I want to make sure that that's one of the the key steps that I'm doing for them. Okay, children as well. You uh, work with children. I do. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, yes. Uh, they're scared. Yes. They're, you know, I'm sure that it takes a special finesse to comfort their nerves and things. Wow. Ah, gosh, you've been with uh, CHI St. Alexis. You said you've been in this uh, this field for gosh over 20 years and just in surgical and now two years as a community health worker you were there when it transitioned from the old hospital to the to the new facility talk about that that had to have been an exciting time for all the employees at CHI St. It, Alexis it really was um, I I didn't get in on the big move at the time um, I was just working PRN at that time but um, you know it, it was exciting to see the old and the new mm -hmm. um, 
over the course of 20 years in healthcare, things have changed so much. Um, going from paper charting to the EMRs now, um, to this brand new beautiful facility. Um, it really makes you feel, feel special, like you've kind of grown up with the place. Um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but uh, let's say that um, I'm a potential employee considering coming to work at CHI, St. Alexia's Health Dickinson. I've uh, got the experience. I've seen how other uh, healthcare facilities operate and things. Why? What would you tell me when I ask you the question, why should I come to work here? Well, if you want to come and work with your family and enjoy what you do every day, then you need to come to CHI St. Alexia's. Um, I have a great team of nurses and providers and support staff mm -hmm. um, that really help me to be successful in what I do. Um, this position would never be successful without um, the other staff um, because they're the first ones that see the patients and they have to pick up on, on those needs and get them to me. Mm -hmm. um, so they're really the ones that are making all of this happen. You know, I'm sitting here listening to all of this, and uh, you know, you talked about uh, how things have changed in the healthcare industry. Things have changed in the operating room. Uh, technology, obviously, uh, a big played a big role in that. But what you have, the 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 caring um, heart, the 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 compassion, that is something that doesn't evolve. You either have it or you don't. And and uh, gosh, you uh, you you really really seem to have that aspect and that's why you do what you do as a community health worker. What are some of the other things? Do you do community events? Do you, I know that CHI St. Alexis Health has a lot of things, uh, you know, for the for the elderly, for the, the grief program, the baby seat program, all of those things. Do you get involved in activities like that as well? I do, yes. I actually, I try to get involved with as much activity in the community mm -hmm. as possible, just to let people know that I'm out there. Um, I'm here for them, you know, if they want to grab me on the street and talk about something, mm -hmm. I'm happy to do that. Um, I do the, uh, the health fairs in town, um, volunteer for um, a lot of the, the community events around town. Um, Great. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm just so impressed with uh, the things that I've learned about CHI St. Alexia's Health. We had um, the president, Carol Enderley, she was on, uh, on the program, and now we have you on the program. And, uh, and is there any question that I haven't asked you that you think we should share with our viewers today? Okay. Allie. I just want people to know that I am here. Mm -hmm. um, I have a wide range of things that I can take care of for people. Um, everything from transportation to appointments in Bismarck um, to helping them get set up with um, child support in the North Dakota social services system. Um, no problem is too big. I'm at least going to give it a try. Um, I can't guarantee I'm always going to succeed, but I'm there to help them through um, those life events and to advocate for their needs. Wow. Uh, before we turn you loose, uh, getting you know back to your, your personal life, you mentioned children. How many children do you have? I do. I have two children. How old are they? I have a 12-year-old son and an 8-year-old daughter. Oh, you're busy. I'm busy. You're yes. busy. Wow. And <laughs> yes. uh, they, like, they like to come to see where mom works every now and then. And They do. My uh -huh. daughter loves Loves to spend time in my office. Oh, great. So you're a Dickinsonite. You've been here your whole entire life, and I don't see that changing, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe you have other aspirations, mm -hmm. but, boy, uh, I think we're a, a very fortunate community to have the services of yourself and everybody at CHI San Alexis. Thank you. You're welcome. You are doing an angel's work, and it's so nice to talk to you. Thank so you nice so much. So nice to meet Joe. you. Thank you. Allie Warner, the community uh, health worker at CHI St. Alexia's Health in Dickinson, and they are the presenter of our program, and we couldn't be prouder that CHI St. Alexia's Health presents Western Edge Living. You know I got two home runs. You got two jets. And then my grand slam. Uh, I signed the ball for you. Okay. And it says, Papa, I love you. Why did you do that? Because you've taught me everything about baseball. I'm having fun. I'm so sweet. Papa, I love you. Papa, I love you. 
Service Pro Express Lube, now open on East Villar Dickinson. Get your vehicle serviced quickly and you're back on the road in no time. No appointment required. You don't even get out of your vehicle. They utilize Service Pro Oil, the only oil produced and refined in the U.S., and it meets or exceeds vehicle manufacturer requirements. Plus, they top off all fluids and perform multi-point inspections. It's part of what's offered at Service Pro Express Lube. Students looking for a part-time gig? Inquire at Service Pro Express Lube. Ask about the scholarship incentive program. Service Pro Express Lube, East Villar Dickinson, next to Lucky's. IT problems have you down and you need to get back up and running? Then call the IT techs at Consolidated. Here's what our customers are saying. Josh called moments after I sent my ticket in and resolved the issue in about 30 seconds after logging onto my computer. Very friendly and professional. Thank you. Eric responded to our request very quickly and resolved the issue for us right away. Great service from Brandon as always. Amazing and helpful as always. Let us help you with your IT issues. Call Consolidated Business Solutions 483-4000 today. Being affected with hearing loss is a common problem, but it made me feel detached from those around me, particularly loved ones. Finally, I made the decision to contact Alliance Center for Hearing in Bismarck. They understand hearing loss and are very thorough in testing, diagnosis, and recommending a solution. Contact Alliance Center for Hearing to begin your journey to better hearing. Alliance Center for Hearing gave me my hearing back, which brought me closer to those who matter most in my life. And we are back on Western Edge Living, presented by CHI St. Alexius Health Dickinson. You know, if uh, you're from the area and you're familiar with uh, social media, you uh, probably have frequented What's Up Dickinson for a, a time or two. And as I go on that site every now and then to get ideas for the show, a name kept popping up, it, the name of Dean Kluver. And lo and behold, uh, my curiosity got the best of me, and we invited him to come on in and join us today. Dean, good to see you. Good to see you as well. Dean nice to finally Clu meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Kluver and son painting and epoxy, that's about all I know about you. So yeah. let's, uh, let's dig in here. Uh, one thing that impresses me is that you are very motivated by the community that you live in, and we're going to touch on that. But First, tell us a little bit about your background. Where'd you go to school? Where'd you grow up? Well, you know, that's been a pretty hot topic because I, I, I was born in Spokane, Washington. Okay. And raised in Southern California, a small town called Hemet. Rural, small, small town community. We had uh, dairy farms. We had strawberry fields, orange groves. That was a kick as a kid, just riding through there on a dirt bike in the orange groves and occasionally make see your buddy whip in front of you without <laughs> knowing, but it was just an absolutely beautiful experience as a kid being down there. I bet it was. Southern California, huh? Wow. Oh, yeah. And uh, how old were you when you left Southern California? Well, it's, I, I finished my senior year in high school at 16, oh, wow. and so going from there to, well, Spokane, Washington again for college. My uh -huh. sister, she went to GU, Gonzaga, and I went to a small community college called Spokane Falls, okay. uh, home of Sasquatch. So, yeah. Well, wait a minute, home of Sasquatch? The Sasquatch, big Did right you saw there. him? You saw Sasquatch? Oh, yeah, every really? day you sit okay. there and be like, fans, do you see him? And next thing you know, you see a, a quick little glimpse from those little, little side <laughs> panels here and there. But <laughs> well, that's a whole other story there, but oh, uh, yeah. gosh. And what brought you to Dickinson? How did you end up, uh, you know, all the way from yeah. the West Coast, Southern California, Washington to? Yep, to, to out here from my from my father. So my folks, they they split up. Uh, it was my sixth grade graduation night. There's a video of it where mm -hmm. you know it was at a our, our Christian uh, play. Okay, they're sitting there and they're panning through the kids. I'm sitting there just kind of staring at the sky, going like, "What's going on? Is it two Christmases now? What's it, what are we doing here?" And uh, from that, my dad went out to North Dakota. And uh, because of that split and everything on there, never really grew up around him, never really had seen him too much. And so I made a bet with him when I was working at Wells Fargo to where, hey dad, if I don't get this promotion, I'll come on out, I'll learn the trade, I'll catch up with you. Wasn't too excited about it. You know, you, usually when you make a bet, it's uh, you're pretty confident you're gonna win. Mm -hmm. And so I made that bet to move out here. I uh, was pretty confident I was, but here I am. How I long ago? <laughs> How long have you been in Dick? In Since Dick 2016. 2016, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. And uh, all this time, you've been involved with uh, your own business, the painting business? Right. And so on there, I started at the bottom with him, just working my way through it. Mm -hmm. I thought, to be honest with you, it was going to be very cushioning, being the boss's son and all that. But it actually removes a filter. Uh, what you would normally talk to, you know, a new employee, kind of console them, treat it right. With your son, it's just, you know, what? No son of mine can't paint. Are you, are you kidding me right now? Uh -huh. What are you doing? Get back up there. I know you fell, but I mean... Your ribs can grow back. Don't worry. <laughs> so, did that. Uh, took over the reins for him in 2019. Of 
course, 2020, here comes COVID. Right. So basically everything that he taught me kind of went out the window. Mm -hmm. uh, dug deep and just kind of hoped for the best. Uh, at that time, my wife and I, we got married in 2019. In 2020, we invested in our first home, hired a local contractor, and he set the chimney through the ceiling and floor joists. So we were actually homeless for a little bit of time. Oh, wow. I don't recommend it. You got a newborn, <laughs> a year into your marriage and all that, you're going through COVID, dad just passed you the reins and all stuff. It's, it was definitely mentally draining. I mean, I, I'm sure it, it was, it was a tough time. Yeah. Um, I definitely had a lowest point and that's actually what brought me to have so much love for the community. Uh, I had recently finished a contract with a local company here and uh, painted the entirety of it. They heard of the news about me and they called me back. And at first I thought, ah, oh, dang, no, we must have tagged the ceiling somewhere. There must've been a touch up. And I come to find out, they said, you know what, Dean, we don't like this color. Not one bit. Even though we talked about it for months and everything out here, we want you to repaint this entire facility all over again. No, and I please. sat there and I just went, you know, I could do that. I could definitely do that guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm an outsider. Most people are. It's a very tight knit community. And so for them to kind of, you know, put that arm around you and be like, you got this. Wow. You're going through something. We'll help you out. That sounds like a defining moment, Dean. It oh, sounds like it changed you. It, it really did. And in all honesty, there was a, a even more so a lowest point in my life that a lot of people get, a little weak point on there. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know how personal you could get I'm talking about that on here with it. You could probably cut it out in there, but I did reach a low point with it, uh, with an attempt that thankfully I was unsuccessful at. And with that, it kind of gave me more of a purpose. Uh, it gave me more of a drive uh, because of seeing those things of what, what you may have lost in that short short scope of things, like a home or a job or just a certain struggle. Looking at the big, bigger picture of like your family or the people that truly love you and care about you, even strangers that are willing to, to make that investment towards you. You it can't showed you what's important what's to important. you. And you had to realize that on your own, right? I did. Wow, good for you, Dean. And I made that commitment afterwards where it's, you just, you have to keep giving back, whether it's small. Mm -hmm. And that's all it did. It started from those small events where we made it to the 40, big 40 year anniversary, I'm third generation of painting, and to make it there finally, after all the trials and errors, the weight crisis, everything, my parents divorced, the whole night, to finally make it. I sat there with my dad, I'm like, well, we can't celebrate. I mean, we're not even here, we can't even say we did 40 years here. Let's do something different. Let's showcase other small businesses and highlight them and say, hey, one day, maybe they'll make it to 40. Here's a new guy, here's this. Let's wear their t-shirts. Our guys get painted on all their gear. Let's wear their gear and walk around town while we're painting and go into the restaurants to eat and all that and showcase for them and help keep pulling them up. And it kept on compounding and compounding to where next thing you know, it was Thanksgiving time. And uh, when I went into Oop and Thai, I spoke with her and she remembers me going in and out because my wife was pregnant and always just asked about the baby. And I said, hey, I've always wanted to do an event where I just handed out free food. Can we do something? And she was so quick to jump on it. It took us two days that we planned the free meals there for Thanksgiving. Curry and rice, about as cheap as you could get. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, for us to be able to stretch that out, it was just, it was just an incredible moment. Wow, I, I'm very impressed. I am very impressed. And I, um, I would hope that you um, are leading by example. You're not preaching, you're not, you're just showing what can be done mm -hmm. when uh, many hands come together to make light work. Right. And, uh, and uh, the community is better off for it. Oh, 100%. And yeah. again, by more so leading by example, or at least laying some of a blueprint, they uh -huh. can keep on expanding, compounding, you know, I'll start a strong foundation, but you guys could take that to the sky. You could leave it as a, just a one story rancher. <laughs> you can, you can do whatever you want with it, but being able to share and just be able to broadcast what happened, your pitfalls here and that, they could keep growing nonstop. Yeah. I mean, what we did at Legacy Square with uh, the Super Bowl party, I mean, that's just one sport. You got all these other ones. You got the Olympics, you got, you got a uh, summer slam that's coming up. And even a participant inside of there is from Dickinson who's now a professional wrestler. Mm -hmm. I mean, to showcase those small things, it's, it's incredible. It doesn't take much. It doesn't wow. take much whatsoever. Wow. What does Dickinson need? What would you like to see if you could uh, <laughs> wipe the slate clean and, and uh, rebuild something or add something? What would you like to see in the community? What would you like to see Dickinson do? Uh, it's honestly just more resources for those in need. Mm -hmm. In all honesty, right now, there's, there's nothing for men as far as uh, 
homeless shelters or anything in that regards towards them. Families have to get split. There's no priority behind it. And in all honesty, a lot of people here are, are transplants from other parts of the, the United States. Mm -hmm. And so to give them that, that, that fall, you know, uh, fall blanket, a little, little barrier that they can just safety catch net. themselves, safety net, mm -hmm. then, you know, you could keep compounding. Because when you remove that fear, that, that fear of just like, oh, what if this happens? Or, oh, man, what if, well, what if people don't show up to the event? Well, I could sit back and say, well, I did it first. Of course nobody's going to show up because it was the first time they ever heard about it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So to give them more of a safety net here and to really just showcase what Dickinson's truly about. Because, I mean, they, you could step on some toes here and there. You could... And I've done a lot of that online. <laughs> with it. And, and, uh, but to, to realize that the community will always have your back. Yeah. And to when you're able to go out there out of your comfort zone or just go past that fear, oh, my God, it's, it's incredible what you can accomplish. Allow me to go out on a limb. I'm going to say you're a spontaneous guy. I mean, if somebody has a great <laughs> idea, they want to get their community involved, right. you're probably going to be about 80% for it, and then they're going to talk you into the other 20. Am I Pretty oh, close on that? Yeah, you're spot on. You talked me into that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you have anything planned for the future? Is it uh, just kind of see which, uh, what the wind blows in? Here? Uh, quite a bit. So we're, we're working on one for, uh, for like Patterson Lake. We're, we're creating what they're called wind phones. Okay. So it's kind of for people that they may have lost a loved one or a friend out there while they're on their journey of just kind of finding peace and solace. Mm -hmm. You have these phones that are disconnected kind of set up, and it gives us opportunity. It's kind of therapeutic where they can walk out, grab the phone, and kind of talk as if they're listening to the other line, completely disconnected. But they're able to sit there and just give a quick note where it's like, hey, Dad, I'm out here at the lake. My son just caught the biggest fish. Not bigger than yours, but, you know, mm -hmm. we all know you're the best. <laughs> and it gives them an opportunity to just kind of kind of give them a little peace. And it costs nothing. It's just scrap scrap pieces that I had. Found an old old phone at a yard sale. Mm -hmm. Combine the two, and next thing you know, it gives somebody some peace of mind. Wow. It's wow. Uh, we will keep an eye um, on, <laughs> on social media, on events that you are planning, because I think there's, besides that one, there's going to be a lot more oh, a lot in more. the future. So uh, before we turn you loose, a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, is there any question that I have not asked you, Dean, that uh, you think that our um, viewer might be interested in? Is there something that uh, we should have touched on that we haven't? I think the biggest thing out there for him is just the fact that you really – you don't need that strong of a foundation. You don't need that strong of a background to, to create a purpose or to create an effect in the community. I mean, it, it could be a, just a general compliment. You know, come in here, and that's the biggest thing. If you just work on compliments alone, like I could say, oh, I've, I've traveled the world. I've seen a lot of places out here, and this room is by far the best. You'll go, no, that's not. You know, but if I say, Bill, I've shaken a lot of hands. And when I shook yours, I'm really glad you let go. That is the best handshake I've ever felt. Oh my! And that feels personal, doesn't it? Because yes, you could it go, does. You know what? He's shaking so many hands, and you know what? I do have a good grip. Oh gosh! <laughs> it feels personal, doesn't it? Wow. Wrapping up, Dean. Gosh, uh, your river runs really deep. I can tell, <laughs> and uh, we'll keep an eye on events that you may have, and uh, try to promote them as best as we can on uh, the TV show. But uh, finally, we know that you're a painter. You and your son are, are painters. Um, we know that you're involved in the community. We know that you're a husband. We know that's what we know about you. That's what I've learned in the last uh, 10 minutes. But who are you? Who, how do you <laughs> want to be remembered when it's all said and done? And here lies Dean Kluver. Mm -hmm. how, do you, what, how do you want people to remember you? Uh, on an, <laughs> as honest as he can, uh, doing right so that he can do right by others. Honestly, at the end of the day, I just want to create a strong foundation for my children to where they could sit there and be like, you know what, I know your dad. I know him. Dean Kluver, thanks for joining us today. Thank it's you. a very, very much a, a pleasure meeting you. You are, a, you're, like I said, your river runs deep, and uh, thank you for what you bring to this community, and uh, we'll continue the conversation soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Western Edge Living, presented by CHI St. Alexius Health. Find us on Facebook. If you have an idea for the show, uh, please uh, send us a message. We would love to hear from you. That's it for today. I thank you so much for watching Western Edge Living presented by CHI St. Alexius Health Dickinson. I'm Wild Bill. See you next time. Thank you for watching Western Edge Living presented by CHI St. Alexius Health Dickinson. Western Edge Living.